Monitoring allows to efficiently manage implementation of a policy program. This is extremely useful, but monitoring is limited in terms of information it can generate. If we want to dig deeper and comprehend the real value and worth of the program, we need to execute an evaluation. We will focus on the most relevant concepts required to, for conducting a reliable evaluation. First, we should evaluate if the policy achieves the expected results. If we have predetermined a proxy of the intended impact and its target level, we can simply compare the latter with the level of achieved change and conclude about the effectiveness of the implementation. Second, and most importantly, we want to determine if the policy program truly makes a significant difference. A policy program rarely works in isolation from the other factors that may impact the same target group. For instance, it is not realistic to expect that the change in startups' innovativeness happens only due to the governmental funding these startups received. There are many other factors that might lead to the change, such as other related policy programs, as well as socio-economic and institutional conditions. Therefore, we say that we want to evaluate possible existence and magnitude of policy contribution in isolation from the other contextual influences on the outcome of interest. If we do find a contribution of the policy program to an outcome, we say that there is an additionality of that project with respect to the other projects or simultaneous developments and prevailing conditions in the environment. So if we aspire to understand the real extent of the program's contribution to the observed change, we should have a holistic ecosystem view and identify, measure and include in the analysis the other important factors that could potentially influence the change too. To help us determine the level of contribution, we most commonly use econometrics which is the application of statistical methods on data aiming to extract relatively simple relationships. Econometric analysis includes modeling of the phenomena and expected association in terms of a linear regression, which can be written down in a form of an equation. This equation has on the left-hand side the outcome of interest, which is presented as a dependent variable. On the right-hand side, there are the key indicators related to the implemented policy program for which we want to assess the effect and we call them explanatory variables. Then, also on the right-hand side, there are indicators for all the other potentially contingent conditions and developments that could impact the outcome of interest, which we address as control variables. And finally, there is an error term which accounts for all the unobserved residual variance, that is, all the things we are not able to measure that could influence the outcome. Putting together this model requires good understanding of the phenomena, including the policy program instruments, the targeted activities, as well as portfolio of the other related policy programs, socio-economic institutional conditions. Once the model is built, based on the theoretical and practical know-how, one can use different estimators to empirically test the relationships between the right-hand side variables and the outcome of interest. This approach provides a powerful tool. Nonetheless, in order to obtain consistent and trustworthy findings using this method, one must address several methodological issues. Let's look at our example and the hypothetical impact we were able to create with the proposed policy program. This diagram shows that the average number of patents at the end of the program implementation is as expected for, which is a substantial increase from the baseline value of 0.8 at its beginning. One could somewhat naively conclude that the change is all due to the program and define the impact result as the difference between the baseline level and achieved level. This would, however, not be fully correct. In order to investigate the real impact, we should establish a counterfactual, also known as a control group, to check what happens to the group that didn't benefit from our focal program over the same time period. For instance, one could look at the innovation output of startups that did not receive the external funding from the Governmental Venture Capital Fund. In case of a control group, we could observe a positive change too, but perhaps to a different degree. That would reveal that there are likely other external factors that lead to an increase in patenting intensity in general. For example, this might happen due to the decrease in the price of patent filling or general technological breakthrough like the one that happened with the diffusion of the internet. Thus, only a part of the impact appears to be contributed by the focal program and the rest would have happened in any case. Only by establishing this new, real impact of the program are we able to reliably evaluate its true value. 
We managed to accomplish this by including the explanatory variable in our econometric model, which is a binary indicator that discriminates the startups funding by the program from the control group. Finding an appropriate control group is not straightforward though. One needs to define clear criteria to do that. For instance, we should find the startups that have very similar characteristics as the startups funding by the program in terms of founders' characteristics, age, size, industry, etc. The only difference should be the participation in the program. Just an example, false counterfactuals would be large companies or startups from completely different industrial sectors from the ones that were a part of the policy program. An additional issue is to avoid selection bias, which we have when we cannot tell a difference between the impact due to the treatment and the impact due to the selection. In our example, we need to understand if the governmental venture capital firm were simply able to choose the startups that would end up having higher innovative output anyway or the very funding they provided made the difference. Sometimes there are intangible reasons that drive this disparity, like social capital and connections of the startup's founders that can't be easily observed, yet may greatly influence the outcomes of their activities. Similarly, we also need to rule out the possibility of mere correlation between the program and the impact and check if there is in fact the expected causality between the two. In other words, did the policy program really manage to make the startups more innovative or these two happen to be correlated for some other possibly unclear reasons? So how can we deal with this methodological issue? There is a myriad of techniques on our disposal, mostly building on the econometric approach we have introduced before, such as difference in difference estimation, instrumental variable design, time series analysis, regression discontinuity design, matching using propensity scores. Alternatively, there are experimental techniques such as randomization or natural experiments, but they are more costly and cumbersome to perform. While detailed exploration of these techniques goes beyond the scope of this course, the main takeaway should be that there are methodological challenges in performing quantitative evaluation, yet there are also viable solutions on our disposal to address them. Lastly, we should try to answer the other remaining questions relevant for evaluation. Do the achieved results justify the cost and resources put in place? That means, is the policy worthwhile? An answer typically comes from understanding the opportunity costs, that is how the resources could have been alternatively spent and comparing the achieved policy impact with the estimated impact of each of the alternatives. And finally, is the policy impact sustainable? Will the impact continue even after the policy program or should it be continuously implemented? In our case, will new upcoming startups also be more innovative even if the governmental funding is not provided to them? Probably not, but what is a more probable scenario is that the funded startups will continue to grow and be innovative for a long period of time after the seed investment by the government. A qualitative assessment can usually more effectively address these last two questions, which corroborates the relevance of combining both methodological approaches to monitoring and evaluation.